Hello everyone, my name is Napoleon Kaufman. I'm the senior pastor here at the Well Christian Community. And I want to thank you for tuning in for Times of Refreshing. But just because we got something done doesn't mean God blessed us. Can I have an amen, y'all? We want to make sure we're aligned with God's will. So we don't want to cheat on God by constantly allowing ourselves to be, to be um, sucked into the world's ways and desires about doing things. We don't want that. And we want to make sure that when it comes to God's will, and we see this here, that 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 I align myself with God's will and me being in the will of God is going to help me to stay in relationship with God. I don't want to become an enemy of God. I don't want to become an enemy of God. I remember the days when the devil was using my life to mess other people's lives up. I remember those days. Man, the devil was using me, man. I didn't even know it. He was just playing on desires and pushing me down a road that was wrong. Well, now we align ourselves with God and we stay in a position, a healthy position before God. He says here, now look at this here. Whoever therefore wants to be the friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you not think that the scripture says in vain? Or do you think that the scripture says in vain? The spirit, now that's a capital S. He's talking about the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, yearns jealously. He yearns jealously. What does that mean? Always keep in mind that the Holy Spirit, He's resident within you. He abides within you. His desire is for the will of God at all times. God is not ever jealous of you. He's always jealous for you. He's jealous for you. The Holy Spirit in us is jealous for us. What do I mean by that? He wants what's best for us in life. So as he's dwelling in you and he sees the will of God and the purpose of God, his desire is for the best for our lives at all times. So he's going to inspire and try to push us in that direction. But when we got this war going on, and we have the Holy Spirit in our lives who's jealous for us. He doesn't like, because he's not going to violate your will, he does not like losing the battle in your heart. Can I have an amen, y'all? He wants to win at all times, and that means you coming into agreement with him, because he's never going to violate your will. We have to submit it. So when we willingly choose to listen to the devil instead of him when he's dwelling in us, he doesn't like that very much. There's a godly jealousy that he has, and he yearns jealously. He's desiring for the best in our lives. He wants you to have the best of the kingdom, and he wants the kingdom of God to be revealed in your life. And that is a good thing. I want the Holy Spirit to be jealous for me. I want him to say, man, you, I don't want you involved in that, because that's going to mess your life up. I want you to stay out of relationship with that person because they're trying to take you down a trap. Just like any parent would do for their kids. I'm jealous for my kids. I want my kids to have the best. I want my kids to have what they need. I want my kids to feel safe and secure. And I don't want my kids struggling and through life. I want my kids, I'm jealous for my kids. Can I have an amen in here? Well, that's how the Holy Spirit is in our lives. He wants what's best, but then we choose wrong. We choose wrong, and it's not, and then what does that do? It messes up God's purpose in our lives. And so for all of us here, we have to get in our mind, every desire that I have is not from God, and I have to choose the will of God. 
And I have to stop and allow my desires and this process to take its course so that I'm choosing the will of God in my life consistently. And then the Holy Spirit is blessed. And then the power of God just begins to release in my life. Do I have what that person has? No, maybe not. Am I, is, do I, do I, am I driving a hoopty right now? Yeah. But I won't be there forever. Do I wish I had that house? Yeah, that would be nice, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm right here, but I'm, I'm, I'm working. We'll see what God does. Can I have an amen? Is this a job, my dream job? No. But am, am I going to keep on working and see what God else has, for, what else God has for my life and keep on? Yeah, he's going to do it. We'll see what happens. But I'm not going to be crying. I'm not going to be whining. I'm not going to be saying God don't love me and God doesn't care and where is God at and I don't understand and, and all this other stuff. When God, he's got me where I'm at right now and I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to keep on working. Can I have an amen, y'all? And then we start, and then when we get that lifted off of us, then we start enjoying where we're at. Why would God bless us with more when we don't appreciate what we have? Can I have an amen, y'all? Nothing worse than going shopping with your kids and you bless them with something and give them something. I didn't want that. That's not what I wanted, but yeah, I'll take it. Look at some of y'all. And God went out of his way to pull you off of drugs, get you out of the street, get you out of bad relationships, clean yourself up, get you right before him, wash you in the blood, forgive you of your sins. And because you don't have a new car, you crying? Instead of saying, Lord, I thank you that I'm just saved in here right now and that I'm in my right mind. Well, praise God for that. Can I have an amen, y'all? I'm just happy I'm saved and I'm in here. Because last year, this time, I was in the club. Look at your neighbor and tell him, but God, but God. That's the mindset we have to get. People, some people, you was in the club last year at this time, doing the sugar foot, <laughs> drunk. And because God didn't bless you with a new car, now you're mad at God. When he, ble- when he kept you, can I have an amen? And now you're here, and we got to give God praise and be thankful for where we got. But our desires, our desires are all over the place. And so I love this. The Spirit of God, he yearns jealously. I want the Holy Spirit to want what's best for me, and I want to yield to that and go through my process with God. But then he says this, and we're going to close this out. He says, but he gives more grace. But he gives more grace. He says, therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to who? To the humble. So he gives more grace, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. So now I want to access the grace of God as I'm going through this desire war in my life. I want to access the grace of God by continually staying humble before God. By continually staying in a place just like I talked talked about of being grateful having gratitude and humble in the sight of God knowing that God knows how to lift me up I'm going to work hard I'm going to be diligent do my due diligence I'm going to go through the process but then God he's the one that ultimately is going to lift me up and if God lifts you up no man can tear you down can I have an amen it's nothing like knowing I'm right in the center of God's will and y'all can't stop it Nobody can stop it. I just got to stay with God. And so this is what he does. Now, I'm going to give you one more passage of scripture that I believe. And I talk about this scripture a lot because it's, it's key for so many things. That is the absolute key for us getting our desires right. Okay? We, wanna, we, we see this with desire. He talks about it. It's clear here. Now, I want to get my desire right so that I don't have confusion in my life around desire. Amen? Go to John chapter 5.
We're going to look at two verses. Well, actually, I, I'm going to go up here. We're going to read verse 16 on down to 19. And then we're going to read verse 30. It says, For this reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, The son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Skip over to verse 30, because he says the same thing in a certain way. Look what he says. He says in verse 30, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. So these two verses are, this is beautiful, because you and I will not totally be free as children of the kingdom of God until we get to a place where the will of God is all we really want. That truly becomes our desire. The will of God is all we truly want. I, I, that that you're, you're free when desire, because that's what desire, desire, just like we read, it's you wanting something, it, wanting something bad, a strong desire for something, a passion for something, a, feel, a feeling that's accompanies, that accompanies unsatisfaction, all these things. But when you get to a place in your life where you say to yourself and the people around you, Man, I just want God's will. Jesus was able to function mightily on the planet in the midst of all the culture, in the midst of all the attacks of the devil, in the midst of all the persuasions and people around him that were close to him, trying to get him to do things, in the midst of all this, Jesus was able to stay steady through it all because he said, I can of myself do nothing. I can't do it. I, I can't. And that's humility. He said he gives grace to the humble. That's humility when you say, I can't do this by myself. I can't go through this life, I can't go through this life and truly be successful on the side of God thinking I can do it all myself. I can't. And the quicker we have that realization, the quicker we're going to experience the power of God here in our life. When we can look ourselves and say, I can't do this. I can't raise these kids. I can't, I can't pastor the church. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't work on this job. I can't do this. I can't catch the bar every day. I can't do this by myself. I need God. He said, I can of myself do nothing. He said, but as I hear, I judge. So now my ear is attuned to God so that I'm able to discern or make the distinction between that which is right and wrong by constantly keeping my ear to God's ear. I can have, he says, but as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous. And then he breaks it down. He says, because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. So now I'm on a quest to find God's will. And that has set me free from always having all these passions and desires. Now his passion and his desire has become my passion and has become my desire. And that's when we really start locking into seeing God doing things consistently in our life. It doesn't mean that you know, having a desire for a clothes or having a, we're not talking about that, y'all. Don't I, because I don't want to get somebody calling me, well, pastor, um, can you ask the Lord to pray with me? I want to pray what I should wear in the morning to work. The devil's a lie. We're not talking about that. We're all mature here, I hope. He's not worried about your shoes right now. 
But understand, but understand, there's decisions we make, passions we have that have to come into alignment with God. So all of us have to stop and say, man, am I just seeking my own will? Am I just seeking my own desire? Am I just seeking a better situation? Am I just seeking a better, you know, a worse situation? Or what is it? It, My motivation has to be right, and God has to be the driver in this. Well, for a lot of individuals, instead of having this perspective, they want to do things and ask God to bless it. He says, I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father. I'm just, what does God say? Let's find out what the will of God is. Let's run right into the will of God. Let's stay in tune with the will of God. Well, that helps us with our desires. So the devil comes to Jesus. He says, fall down and, and, and worship me. I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. The devil knows how to tempt you with stuff that may be for you, but maybe not at this time. He already knew he was going to get all the kingdom. He already owned everything. He already knew if, as I go through this process, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to be over. So what happens, he's not, he couldn't use that. It didn't work on Jesus because all Jesus wanted was the will of God. Can we go a little deeper? Come on, can we go a little deeper? Relationship-wise. In the Bible, it says there's a criteria. If you are a Christian, there's a criteria for marrying somebody else. People have a strong desire. We have a singles ministry in the church. People have a strong desire to be married. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to know what to do with that desire. It may be in the cards for you to get married. It may be in, God may have somebody waiting in the wings right now for you. But a lot of times, God is trying to get you ready while he's trying to get them ready. So, but what happens is we get impatient. And that desire starts to get a hold of us, and the devil starts whispering. And then the devil starts sending the wrong people. But out of our desperation, we'll think anything's a blessing at a certain point. Look at your neighbor and say, wow. We start looking at everything. Well, they're not my type, but <laughs> it, we long in the game. <laughs> we long in the game now. <laughs> Can I have an amen, y'all? And then desire starts moving us. And then the next thing you know, we find ourselves in a terrible situation because we make bad decisions. And then we look up and say, God, what happened? Well, well, you didn't win the desire war. You didn't win it. So let's see how God's going to clean this up for you. Can I have an amen, y'all? And then what happens is we, we do it. We do the same thing on the job. I talked about the job already. We, we don't win the desire war. God's getting ready to open up a huge door, and then this opportunity comes, and then we, well, you know, and then, and then we don't have enough patience. Say, nah, 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 nah. I need to, I need to pray, and I got to hear, really hear from God on this. I want the will of God. But we're going to pay you seven figures. I want the will of God. I'll never forget. And trust me, I could use this money. I'll never forget, I, I'll never forget when I retired from the Raiders, and uh, Matt Millen, he called me, and he was the general manager of the, of the, of the uh, Detroit Lions, and I had just retired like two or three months, I said, I'm done, and I'm going on in the will of God, and he called me, he was like, hey, you know, what did, what did Al do to you, man, what did Al Davis do to you? He said, what did because you just retired suddenly to go into ministry. I said, yeah. He said, but what did Al do? I was like, he didn't do anything. I just felt the call of God, man. God had confirmed, talked to my wife, my pastor. I, I felt good. God confirmed it, man. I, I'm just going. Come on, man. Come on now. And I can remember, you know, in my flesh saying, man, I could take another couple mil. But it's amazing how 
when you get to a place in your life where you just, you don't care. You just want the will of God. And then God's going to take care of you. And we're, I'm blessed. Can I have an amen? God will take care of you. But what happens is the devil, the devil will always present opportunities. And, but we can of ourselves do nothing. As we hear, we judge. And our judgment is righteous because we do not seek our own will. We seek the will of the Father who sent us. So my heart is, your heart is, all of our hearts should be, I just want the will of God. I'm not tripping. I want God's will. You can promise me the world. I won't take it unless God says for me to grab it. Can I have an amen? Can I have an amen, y'all? And so for us here, Saints, this is a war that is raging on in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's not talked about enough. We just pulled the cover off of some of it today so that we can win this war when we walk out those doors, when we're in the church, wherever we go. And then there's a peace that surpasses all understanding that keeps and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as we live in this life. How many want to have peace in your life? Well, this is one of the great keys. Lord, we thank you today. That God, you are helping us to understand this battle that we with on a day-to-day -day basis. It is a war, the Apostle James said, that wars in our members. It causes us to envy and to murder and to desire and not receive our desires because we ask amiss. And then we ask for our own pleasures. Lord, help us to get free from this heart condition that is, that is steeped in selfishness and pleasure-seeking. And help us to get back to a place where we want the will of God. God, you want us to have fun on the earth. You want us to have a good time. You want to bless us with so many things. You have blessed us with so many things. But Lord, we don't want to be like the world that just chases after vanity and chases after vain stuff and their whole pursuit is popularity and, and celebrity and, and, and the next thing greatest and, and all those things. Lord, we don't want to be those kind of people. Help us to be simple people that just love your will. And Lord, bless us. Bless us openly. Lord, I pray that you would cause us to do less but yet make more. That you bless us because we're not striving and struggling and constantly trying to, to make things happen. We yield into you, pushing us forward. Let the wind of your spirit get hold of our sails and begin to push us, Lord, at your pace through life. Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that you would just so bless them in so many different ways. And Lord, if you're blessing people financially, thank you, God. Bless them with more and continue to prosper them financially while they keep their eyes on you. Lord, we thank you this morning that we are not losers. We're winners. Help us to continue to win this desire war. Lord, kill any desire in us that does not align with your will. Lord, destroy it right now. Lord, kill it right now. Let there be no conception or life. And Lord, let your purpose reign and rule in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that today is a day of victory. Today is is a day of triumph that God you are setting our hearts ablaze with your purpose God do it for your glory Lord because we do not seek our own will but we seek your will because you are our father God we give you praise in Jesus name somebody said amen 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 come on y'all stand to your feet amen I'm going to say this. We're going to have, a, we're going to have a, just a time of prayer real quick. Now watch this. Watch how the devil works, y'all. So I read you guys a scripture in St. John chapter 13, verse 2. 
said that Satan put it in Judas's heart to betray the Jesus. And this is what the devil does. He'll take his desire, he'll place it in our hearts, we'll yield to it and give in to what he's trying to do, and then he'll take our lives and mess it all up. And that's exactly what he did to Judas. He put it in his heart, he used him as an instrument to betray Jesus, and then he turns around and just mess, ruins his whole life. Judas was so riddled with guilt and shame and, and all kinds of stuff that he went out and just hung himself. He couldn't deal with it. And the devil sits back and laughs. That's what he does with our lives. When we don't win the desire war, he uses us, he gets stuff, in our, and then he turns around and he laughs. I got him. I got him. We got to get to a place in our lives where we realize that just because something may feel good does not mean that it's always God. And you know what? I'd rather go through a rough road and be with God than get all the stuff in the world. And the devil used me up and spit me out at the end. Can I have an amen, y'all? So today, today I want to have all this call. There's things that we need to take and we need to lay at this altar and say, God, two things, Lord, destroy this because I know it's not right or Lord I pray that you would help me to find the center of your will in this thing because I don't want to make a bad decision Lord I'm making my petition and plea before you if you're in a situation like that and we're dealing with these two situ uh, scenarios make your way to the altar and let God do something he's going to reveal something to you or he's going to take something away from you Today, I believe it, y'all. Come on up to the altar if you know God is speaking to you about something. Come on, the altar. Make your way to the altar, y'all. Altar workers, let's find people. I need all my altar workers to get prepared. Come on down. Let's pray and let's touch and agree with these individuals that are coming this morning. We want the will of God. And they want the will of God. Let's believe God to do what he's doing. Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925-479-1414 or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life, and may His Word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.